right here where it goes from square to round. You know, different, different designs call for a different pommel there, but I'm just turning this, I'm just rounding this over a little bit. It's probably a little extreme for a federal piece. Generally, they're a little straighter, but uh, these are sort of spare parts for me, so I'm not that particular. But what you want to do, without giving a whole lesson in turning, what you want to do is take the bevel of your skew right here, and the bevel, I'll put this on my tool rest, and I want the angle of that bevel to be perpendicular to my turning. You don't want to go like this or like this. You want to have that angle of your bevel, which is, you know, like a 45 degree angle or something there. I want that to be perpendicular to the work. So that when I plunge this in, it'll leave a square shoulder on one side and it'll cut in on the other side. And, and this, I learned this from reading that book. So you put this on the, I'll put this, and I'll rest it against the tool rest and I'll just wait till the point engages and then I'll raise it up here. This is rattling. It's pro I should probably just speed it, speed it up a little bit. It's all right. The other thing you don't want to do is put too much tension on it. Don't crank your tailstock up because it'll put it under tension and it wants to bow. You, know, you really don't want it to bow. So I'll drop the, drop the point in like that. And so I'll get that. I want to go a little bit more. Looks like it's not quite centered, or else it's bowed a little bit in the middle. So I'm going to I can see it's bowed. Yeah. So I'm just going to cut in a little deeper so that. Jeez. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Downstairs. Um, so I'm now I've cleaned it off to the point where I'm down to the to the circle. I'm cutting all the way around. So now when I clean this off, it will it won't trap it can't travel back in here. So I just take a little this is a little homemade gouge that I've made years ago. You can use a roughing out gouge. Roughing out guy was just a big U ground straight across, which works pretty well too. When you get out into the middle, you don't want to push down too hard. I'm kind of letting it float. You know, I'm holding it like this. And if you hold it lightly, if it catches, it'll just fire the tool down. If you really lean into it and it catches, it'll break the work. So if you hold it light enough, if it gets a catch, it'll just fire the tool out of the work instead of trashing the work. So I'll just slowly take this down. So I'm just taking the corners off. You can see here, it's just getting, getting it close. You want to cut very high on the work. So if this is your work spinning. You're cutting up here. You're not cutting. This is scraping. <laughs> this is the way it wants to be cut up here at a very high angle. So what I do is I rest my tool on the work. Then I drop the tool just until it starts to cut, and that's where you want to cut. Because that's the least the point of least resistance. And you'll have much more help. You know, if I were turning 50 of these, I'd probably speed the lathe up so I could do this faster. But Turning slowly as far as the RPM goes will actually give you a better feel for the wood. Also keeps these guys from getting too hot. So I'm just feeling whether it's a cylinder or not, it's still square. Bah. That was when it catches. So that's pretty round there. Notice once I set it, I'm just moving my legs. I'm just shifting my whole body sideways. I'm not like steering it like this. Once you get the tool set up, you can just slide your whole body. I 
like that. Took a pretty good chunk out of it when I caught before. The other thing is I'll put my hand on the work to keep it from vibrating much in to the middle. Damp it. it just dampens it down. And yet that's the thing, if it's going slow enough, you won't burn your hand. But this thing is really spinning. And you make a cut and it has a little ridge, all of a sudden that little ridge will heat up and it'll burn your hand. So you want to, by keeping it slow, it uh, keeps it cool. Yeah, it's going to be a little screwed up there, but like I said, there's always a back side. So now that I've got this pretty smooth on the bottom here, the, the only one I really care about now is the necking, which is the first molding. I've got the little cove here, the shoulder rounds off here, and then it tapers down, tapers down to this point here. And that's the first point I'm going to shoot for. What I generally do is I'll put the, the marks on here and then I'll hold the pencil on and give myself a little line here. So those are the ones I need right now. So I'm going to pare the shoulder down a little bit and round it over with a skew like that. I'm going to take the point of my skew and define the limits of that bead. Now I'm taking the heel of the skew and then a gouge. I'm just creating a flat place in here. I'm not going to cut the cove yet. If I were to cut that cove now, it would make it very thin here. It would be liable to whipping. So what I do is, I'm just going to lay out the place where the cove is going to be and make a cut, make a couple cuts here. Then I'm going to locate that cove. But I'm not going to cut it. And I'm going to make this little round bead right here with, with a gouge just by rolling it over. There. I kind of destroyed that. That bead's going to be. Are you slowing this machine down here through that? My minor diameter here. And this parting tool I grind with the corner of a little grinding wheel so the top is hollow. So I've got two little wings sticking out so it, it's like this on the top and it's ground flat on the bottom. And what that does is it creates a little sharp wing on each side that shears the fibers as I go in and it, it works a little bit better than a straight across one. It's like the knickers on a plane. So I'll just do that till that falls through. And eventually I'm going to do it on the other side of it, but right now I just want that. And then I'll take my gouge and I'll run this taper. I'm just slowly taking some off. I'm not taking any off up here. I'm really concentrating from about here down. Cutting up high on the work always. So I'll take some off the middle. And if you drag your gouge backwards, it'll cut off any bumps without riding over them. It'll just slice them off. Sometimes if you go just square to it and go, it'll tend to ride on the bumps. But if you pull it this way and slice it, it'll cut into the little bumps and it'll clean them right off. Like that. Still a little fat right here. So once I've got it close, then I'll go to a skew. 
and I'll clean it off with a skew. So I'm cutting like, like this with just the first third of the skew and keeping the tip away. So you're rotating the skew. All I'm doing is so lifting it as I go. So the point is doing the cut. With the heel, if there's a big bump and I'm trying to chew it off, and I'll just let the heel lead. But I find it easier to get a good cut if I just cut with, like I say, the bottom third, the bottom half. When I get down here, I'll tip it a little and let, and let the heel cut up to my necking. So I'm just looking at it now to see, there's a, there's a bump right here, you can see. After a while you get good at noticing what's wrong, and you can feel it. That's, that's pretty good. Behind my necking here. eyeball that that's about right um, now I'll take this necking down a little because it's fairly close to the work like that I'm just gonna leave it like that for a second the place where the beads are I make them a little bit actually I should mark those I make them a little bit less than the major diameter take them down a little in this case I'm just gonna eyeball where this is gonna be so I've got one three beads and I'll, I'll do them the same way I did my pommel. I'll just take the corner and I'll just make a little bevel on the corner of each bead and then I'll do this, the other side of them. Then I'm going to push the tip of the skew in between them and then I take the heel of the skew and I just roll it over the top of them to make the bead. Practically no pressure here. Just kind of letting it float over the top. I'm literally holding the bottom of it like this. Just let the corner catch. And then roll it down into the groove. You can also do it with the tip of the skew, but it's a little trickier. I find you get a little bit better finish if you use the bottom of the skew instead. So now I've got my three beads and I'll clean up two of them. First I'm going to punch a little cut nice and deep. There's a little shoulder on either side of the beads. So I'm just going to make that shoulder. Like that. So now I've got three beads proud of what's around them. I'll cut in and create that little shoulder with the point of the skew. Drop this in. So I just made one side of the bead and the fillet. Now I'll roll the tip of the skew, I mean the base of the skew over the top of the necking. Make the back of the bead and I'll clean up the front of it. And this little fillet's a little too fat, it's a little too high, so I'm just going to take it off. I'm using the base of the skew. So I start vertically. What I do is I just pushed it in and rolled it. So I got that cove a little bit. So I'm just coming over the top and then I'm pulling it up to my neck. And so I've got that little small part there. And you can get a pretty smooth finish with a gouge like this. Because it's, it's sort of like a number 11 carving tool. It's got a fairly high side on it so I can use it as a skew. That's really what I'm doing here. That's a little bit better. So I'll remark my high point. I forget about the low point, I know what that is. So then I'll take my gouge and I'll clean out this, I'll make this cove and I'll drop it down into the minor diameter here. So I'm going to take this gouge and just clean it down into the bottom of the valley here, at my bottom. 
I'm using my hand so it can't travel back this way. I'm, I'm pushing my hand against, that's why I like these wooden tool rests. Push my hand against the tool rest and really grab this thing so it can't bounce. And then roll it. And I'm actually going to use the corner of it to get in there. Get a nice clean transition there. So then I'll make the, the narrow part. That's the narrow part of my foot. I'll roll it over this way. going back and making stuff smaller. So then I'll take the skew and I'll go from the top down into the valleys. So I'll go from here down into here. Some connection to the water. And I'll feather that into the hollow and then here. Once to vibrate you can hear it. So I'm starting like this and going like this. From that side and then from that side. You want to get a purchase on the tip. Once it starts to grab, I want to make a little bit better shoulder with my skew. Give it something to really push against. I'm just pushing it in and turning it. Stop at the bottom, you can't come up the other side. You know, it's, it's pretty rare that you have to. I'm just cleaning up this. Essentially I'm pinching the tool into the work like this. I'm pulling and I'm using my finger to pull the screw in this way. And I'm you know, resting it on the tool rest. I'm just letting the, letting the tip catch and then I'll go back into the gouge. Same thing here. You can hear it. When, it, when you're slicing it, it just makes that <clears throat> sort of swishing sound. If I were to scrape it, it would start to shake and rattle. One thing I learned about turning, a very good turner guy named John C. You can polish it with chips. Generally, if you get a really, really good cut surface, <clears throat> you can wet it, the grain won't even raise on you. Although I'd probably hit this with a little 400, just be on the safe side.